Hello, friends and family. Um, as you know, I'm Nora, and I'm a general dentist. I get exposed to aerosolized pathogens on close range with patients on a daily basis, um, and my best friend uh, gave me this book. She's also a dentist, and uh, I thought it was just almost too good to be true. It's called Rapid Virus Recovery. It's by a cardiologist and um, attorney, He's board certified. His name is Thomas Levy. This is his 13th book, and it was really well written, and I read it so quickly, and I highlighted it in dog ear, and I told all my friends to get one. And it sounds almost too good to be true because I didn't learn any of this when we were going to school, so I thought, well, there's just no way, but um, it makes a lot of sense. And he backs up his 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 treatment protocols, which are not really that new. He didn't make anything up. Here's over... I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's like 600 citations in here. Yeah. So, and they're from all peer-reviewed journals. So the book is called Rapid Virus Recovery, No Need to Live in Fear by Thomas Levy. I highly recommend that you guys get this, but I will be talking about how we have used his, um, his very simple treatment protocols in our daily lives. And I have been exposed to sick patients, um, sick employees, sick team members, sick friends. And I, I don't know, not just me, but we're totally okay. And granted, it's also because we have fairly good diet, we exercise and we don't have a lot of comorbidities, but we've been sick before. Like I, I remember coming back from Peru and I had what we affectionately call Peru lung. We were coughing for like a, a month. And then I came back from Ethiopia um, and I was really sick. So every time I come back from a trip, I get, I get sick. Maybe it's just the stress or the different germs that they have there. And if I had known about that, I would have known about this protocol, I would have totally used it then. But I can't really describe the book that well. There's so much to it, so I still recommend you get it. But I'll just read to you um, the back cover. Uh, it's normal and appropriate to fear an infection that can take your life, especially when you believe that you cannot avoid getting it sick or that you cannot cure it once you have it. The COVID pandemic now has most of the population literally petrified. As it turns out, the healthy immune system can kill any pathogen it counters. It encounters. The number of potential infections that get repelled on a daily basis is enormous, but sometimes a strong immune system needs a little help to keep the body well. It turns out there are many remedies that directly use and stimulate the body's natural ability to kill pathogens, particularly COVID and other acutely contracted respiratory viruses. The treatments can be quick and effective. In fact, when applied properly, the infection always loses. And um, furthermore, the primary treatment discussed in this book is easy and literally costs pennies. There are no toxic side effects and is available to anyone. Loads of legitimate science proves that the amazing information presented herein is not too good to be true. Let's all put COVID in the rear view mirror forever. And he actually makes a, um, a couple other things which I have been uh, trying out and I have to say it has actually changed our lives for the much better and I'll explain that in a minute. This book has two uh, has a forward and an introduction written by two different doctors and I will just read to you uh, the one this is by a doctor named Ron Hunninghaik he's a chief medical officer for the Reardon Clinic in Wichita Kansas he wrote with this understanding of the power of properly dosed hydrogen peroxide, Levy has revitalized the procedure of nasal nebulization with hydrogen peroxide. Yes, properly administered nasal hydrogen peroxide nebulization gives all of us the power to kill nasal pathogens, including the novel coronaviruses. And then another book, another introduction. Okay. No current medical textbook even mentions vitamin C or other possible treatments for infectious diseases, such as nebulization. There's more politics in medicine than there is politics. <sighs> in extremely poor areas of the world, a nebulization machine, which involves a one-time expense of $30 to $40, can be shared by a household and would be used at a local clinic or treatment center. And treatment times only are 5 to 10 five to 15 minutes in most circumstances. A pint of regular 3% hydrogen peroxide with variable degrees of dilution with water or sterile saline, depending on patient tolerance, has a retail cost of one to $2 on the planet. 
And so because there's really no money in this, I don't think the pharmaceutical companies are interested. And here's another thing too that I've noticed. Um, I care a lot about like gut microbiome and leaky gut. And I, I think that there's a lot of science to uh, taking care of the microbes that live in our gut because there are a lot of them. And um, there's a lot more research now about that. And uh, you are what you eat. <laughs> so although not the primary message of this book, it turns out that hydrogen peroxide nebulization along with a few other interventions effectively restores a normal or near normal gut microbiome in many people who end up nebulizing on a semi-regular basis. This is of enormous consequence to general health and if the world was not in the COVID pandemic, it would be the primary message of this book. So there's a lot more to this book than just you know, treating upper respiratory infections. So I have here a couple things. I will show you how to use it. Um, so there, are, when I finished reading this, I thought, well, the first thing I want to do is test it out on ourselves. Um, so I went on Amazon and I saw a lot of nebulizers. There's a lot of handheld nebulizers, which are super convenient. So we got one, which, this side is actually what we end up using a lot. It's very small and it's got a um, little battery. You can also charge it, so you can do either or, which is really convenient. It's great for traveling and um, it's super easy to use. It comes in this little box and inside the box you get a, um, an adult mask and you get a little baby mask or child mask. The only problem is these masks, when you get them, they're folded this way when they really should have been folded this way. So like, so you're constantly, when you're first start using, you're trying to constantly get it to fit your face. That really sucks. So I wish they, they folded it the other way. It wouldn't really have made any difference in the packaging at all. And so when we first got out, I'm like, well, I'm not gonna just use it right out of the box, you know? So we have to sanitize it. So I have, um, 70% isopropyl alcohol, first aid antiseptic for rubbing and massaging. I don't know who, <laughs> who uses that to, to get a massage. Ugh. Talk about drying out your skin. So then I get like one of these, these are just, you know, for my cosmetics. And then I wipe down the mask. I wipe this down before every use too just in case I forgot after. Because I usually do this uh, at the end of the day after I brush and floss my teeth, and Brandon does too. And um, so you can nebulize while you're watching TV or reading a book. It's very convenient. We, we, don't, we don't need the, to sanitize the kid one. <laughs> and then the, here's the actual unit itself. We wipe that down. And then there's a little button in the back here. You click that and then the whole thing comes off. This, you don't get wet. This is like the the nebulizing mm, electrical stuff. And then I just sort of, you know, do that. And then the this is where this little lid flips up right here. Whew. And there's got, you gotta be careful. There's a tiny little gasket in there and that can get dislodged, but it's very easy to uh, put back together. And then I kind of sanitize the inside. I mean, technically, it's hydrogen peroxide, right? So it's supposed to kill a lot of germs on contact. Besides, you know, it's not like we're not breathing them in all the time anyway. Especially now. Okay, so, and this thing, this little little rubber cylinder, are, I, you had to put that on there yourself. There's a tiny little vent hole over here. My mistake is that you're supposed to leave a little bit of that open. That's there for a reason. <laughs> And I put the um, cover on it all the way. Now I can't get it off. So I think we're nebulizing at pretty strong levels. So when you put this on there, just sort of make sure you don't cover this. There's a little vent right there. And I clean the inside. Okay, so this is really important. Pay attention. Inside this cylinder is a little mesh. And that mesh can get clogged up. So you have to clean it with a Q-tip if it looks um, like it has particulates on there or something because it won't nebulize if 
you don't do it. Oh, and I, one of the questions I had too was, what is the difference between a nebulizer and a humidifier? Like, why can't I just put my face up against a humidifier? Well, the difference is actually 